24-7, 365. We never stop sifting fact from fiction, misinformation from the truth. From government overreach to the latest on mandates, big tech censorship to propaganda gone mad. Listen to TNT Radio and get the news and views direct from our expert presenters and commentators anywhere you go. Ask Alexa or Google to play TNT Radio or download the TNT Radio app for free from the App Store or Google Play. Today's news talk, this is TNT Radio. Not joking either. Welcome back to the show. Don't forget you can call in and get on our online chat as well. And welcome to the show as well, Hayden Appleby. You can follow him on X at Hayden Appleby. He is the host of Utter Truth podcast, a journalist. His bio reads, sorry, I won't be bought. Neither can we. Hayden, how are you this morning? Good, thank you. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, it's Pleasure. brilliant to have you because you are here to discuss Hugh Edwards. Now, he's suddenly come Indeed. back in the headlines. The BBC mm-hmm. are apologising to his family uh, over the scandal and over the way the complaint was handled. It's taken them six months. Why did it take them yep. so long to come out and apologise, Hayden? Well, I think that's the question at the heart of it. And it's kind of ironic, isn't it? It's it's taken them six months to come out and apologise about how long it took them to investigate <laughs> initially so (laughs) I think at the heart of all of this is kind of an analysis of the BBC why why do things take so long why did it take so long I'm going to keep referring back to the Jimmy Savile era the Jimmy Savile situation because people have really vague memories and people forget things we forget you know I can guarantee if another so-called pandemic was around the corner in a few years people would forget these kind of patterns that came from the last one and we also forget these institutions these organizations like the bbc and what they've done in the past and so it's kind of this surprise when when something similar happens again so why did it take them so long do we honestly know was there some kind of element of we don't really want to talk about this we want to brush it under the carpet like happened with jimmy savile perhaps i don't think that's a conspiratorial suggestion i think it's perfectly fair when we when we analyze this organization and what they've done uh looking through my notes by the way i've uh, written down the same as you jimmy savile brushing it under the carpet (laughs) so we're on the same Mm. we're on the same lines um but you know it's taken they said they've had to do a review so the reason it's coming out their excuses well we've it's taken us uh six months to do a review are you really telling me right how much evidence can there be and how many people do they need to sift through a few uh, yeah. bits of evidence on Hugh Edwards are they do they take the public for being that stupid mm-hmm. I, I think they do I honestly think they do that I think a lot of people the BBC you know they, they will call themselves objective and kind of non-biased and things but I do think they're biased I do think they are kind of an arm of the state and when you look at the review and you look at the report itself there's no way it had to take six months you look at what they say they say they had quote shortcomings there was a need for greater consistency it's all very vague language there's no real you know there's no like nothing of substance that 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 they have reported on saying you know this is what we found that this is how we're going to with substantially change you know materially change what we do it's just all very you know these are our mistakes and we're going to keep making them (laughs) i i feel a little bit like rick they're kind of uh throwing uh hugh edwards under the bus a bit a bit like Mm. bringing up his name again let 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 people remember him and then uh the bbc's cover up can get forgotten do you think rick you know just keep putting back in the news again well, you know, for him, it's unfortunate, but I don't know if you guys can remember, there was a, a one, two, three happening at the time this yeah. Edward scandal came out. I think Philip Schofield uh, departed mm. maybe the week before that. Then we had Hugh Edwards scandal, the one that we're talking about now. And then, of course, I think maybe the week following that, I'm just, you know, give or take a week or two, we had the whole Russell Brand shenanigans yeah. all to do with uh, sexual, uh, you know, impropriety and stuff going on behind closed doors that couldn't have been on. They haven't plucked brand back out at the fire again they haven't plucked old Schofield old Gordon the Gophers mate back out again but old Hugh Edwards uh he's an old man maybe they're they're going after him on an ageist front maybe they're thinking he's too old and decrepit to put up a fight so let's target (laughs) Hugh again what do you think about that Hayden yeah I mean I think that even with Russell Brand at the time something a lot of people when I kind of reported on this back in as you say July August time what a lot of people were missing was kind of everyone's attacking 
Russell Brand is kind of being used as this this great this great way to attack his message right these allegations can be used to to highlight what happens when you become a conspiracy theorist all of this but what a lot of people were failing to see was actually the ramifications that at the heart of that story was the BBC once again even of course all of it is alleged all of it are accusations but even if there was truth in any of these three individuals at the heart of all of them are mainstream media outlets that have sat on stories that have covered things up that have not investigated properly and that have allowed it to happen in the first place you know this is what people were missing with russell brand you know people were just casually ignoring how the bbc were being slated at the heart of it and i was like no let's not <laughs> ignore that part um so yeah i think that it's in it's certainly a, a, what i actually wrote in my notes was focus on bbc you know we can yeah talk about specific individuals Hugh Edwards yeah. Russell Brand Philip Schofield but focus on the institutions that keep doing it over and over again that keep allowing it to happen facilitate it I've got a quote from Katie Hopkins lover or hater I think it really summed it up she said we're not asking about the specific individuals we're quote asking why the taxpayer bastion of Britain the BBC seems to provide safe haven for a collection of perverts talentless egomaniacs and overpaid government shills and i think that kind mm. of sums it up that sums is the question up. we're asking yeah. it's about yeah. the outlets themselves and it makes it worse that it's it's taxpayers money and agreeing mm. with you completely i wonder if they brought hugh edwards back this six months review because it already I, I read it this daily mail article it says in it oh we won't be coming back to work so yeah. it was. It's almost like put his name out there. It distracts, actually, doesn't it, from what the mm. BBC are doing, and they're and them actually are taking a responsibility. Let's blame it back on yeah. Hugh Edwards. The BBC, we're okay. Mm, yeah, definitely. And again, whatever Hugh Edwards has been specifically accused of doing, did do, didn't do. I think, of course, related to the the alleged victims and their families, that's important. But when it comes to the general public, I think what we need to focus on more is, as yes. you say, the BBC. Um, that affects us more. This is the the great institution we fund with so many of our tax pounds. And it's like, you know, you look at their constant misleading. You look at the at the risk of attacking them, peddling of lies <laughs> over the last few years. And then you look at these situations these kind of harboring of just nasty nasty individuals and you think are they using him as a scapegoat and i don't think that's a radical suggestion <laughs> yeah. no yeah no. Abs and you don't absolutely have, yeah you, you go, don't right. have to look past the the statue uh, that's at the front of the bbc to know what that organization is yeah. all about it's a you know a basically a pedophilic statue that's or i think somebody vandalized that recently and they actually paid uh, to have it restored again rather than having it removed and when you think uh, he hadn't you think about Britain the cancel culture that's in Britain at the minute you know statues are being removed of certain people that are mm -hmm. contentious for what they did in the past places are being named street names are being renamed because they're too offensive to some people BBC doesn't have yeah. any problem with having a you know a man and a, and a child uh, you know in a caress out the front of the the BBC building you would have thought that they would have started with something like that if they wanted to remove something offensive and distasteful would you not yeah, well, they don't want to remove anything distasteful because ultimately they're what I would call, what I would reference, you look at George Orwell's 1984 and they are like the Ministry of Truth. They are kind of what we say, we set the precedent, you know, you can always look back at the BBC to fact check. They're kind of, they've got their disinformation department with Marianne Spring. It's like this, this perfect organisation. And then, yeah, you look under under the underbelly you look under the dirt and actually in fact you don't have to look very deep <laughs> and actually no. you yeah. see you see corruption and it's not just corruption with telling the news and corruption with misleading reports it's now corruption with minors and you start to think when are we going to put our values and our ethics above the convenience of watching bbc one in the evening the convenience of having radio one on and start to really care about values <laughs> Do you, know, do you know what the review doesn't go into? In the, in, I was reading about it, and like you said, everybody knows about what happened at the BBC yeah. with Jimmy Savile. Now, don't the BBC have a duty and responsibility after they've admitted that's happened to take every allegation that's similar to that seriously? And that's not been put in the review. Again, that's just mm -hmm. brushing that under the carpet. Oh, yeah, we know this happened with Savile, but never mind. I know we didn't look into this properly, but uh, never yeah. mind, eh? You know, what? why hasn't that been mentioned? Surely, you know, 
the incidences with Savile should have been in the review, shouldn't it? Yeah, 100 percent. And the incidences with Savile should have been addressed years ago, but obviously weren't. And so it's a pattern. You have people who are paid upwards of 400 grand a year and they have these positions and they have this influence. And again, whether whatever they did or didn't do, the BBC are able to provide that kind of safe haven. And no, they don't change. I don't think they change. Um, Of course, I'm all about forgiveness. I'm all about second chances. But there comes a time when we have to look at an institution and see uh, uh, just a a lot of corruption in in the underbelly. This isn't a normal just broadcaster, you know, the the, the countless stories over and over again. I mean, Dame Janet Smith, way back, I believe this was in 2022, found a climate of fear. That was her quote in the BBC following an investigation. It's it's kind of it's like something you'd see in fiction and we still watch it. We still listen to it and we still trust them. Yeah. And it's still happening. And thank you, Hayden, yeah. for coming on for that brilliant analysis, because you focused on the right thing. Everybody else is mm. focusing on Hugh Edwards. That's what the mainstream mm. media are doing. And we should be yeah. focusing on the BBC. So hopefully you can come back and speak to us soon. And don't forget, you can follow him at Hayden Appleby on X. Uh, but we've got to take a break now here at today's News Talk. Thank you. Give me a minute with TNT Radio's Steve Malsberg. 